Good evening. It is Saturday night, late night upload, folks. Okay, but it's not a work night, so that means we can play around at the computer deck. All right. I can't help you until you're ready, Dave Ramsey. Um, let's see here. It looks like this ran about a month ago. So I'm going to find out along with you what this is all about. Let's take this on down. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. I would like to sincerely thank you for joining me this evening. Let's find out tonight's bedtime story. Brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. Hamilton, New Jersey. Natalie is on the line. Hi, Hi Natalie. Natalie. Hi, I'm good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Okay, so me and my husband, we're, we were on Baby Step 2 for a while, and then we went back to Baby Step 1. Um, ever since 2019, we, like, bought a house, and then we ended up getting cars because our cars were falling apart, and... Um, we were having a baby and all that stuff. So anyway, when we bought the house, they said we needed to get a new roof within the next year or two, and that was 2019. So now it's 2023, and we need a new roof, and it's going to be like seven thousand dollars, and we don't have anything saved for it, and we're Shocking. trying to figure out. Who's still yeah. uh, okay. Um, I'm going to step out on a ledge here, and. Uh, 47, 47 seconds in, I'm going to say they bought too much house. They bought too much house. Because of the fact that they don't even have a savings account for it. And I can tell you when I got my little condo, all 840 square feet, one of the things I did make sure is I had some way to cover emergencies. Okay? I mean, just some way. In other words, I had a plan. Yeah. Yeah, like we told you not to buy uh, a house while you're in debt, and you did it anyway. No, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that's that's kind of like a kid with their hand in the cookie jar. Guilty. Well, no, yeah, well, I, but I didn't have my fingers touching the cookie. Yes, my hand's in the jar and the lid's off, but my fingers aren't touching the cookie. They're just halfway there. Because we all know that Ramsey says, do not buy property when you're in debt. Now, I did buy a piece of property with my student loan. All right. Um, don't want to get off track onto that. But I will say, you know, I don't think that rule has to apply all the time. I think it's an individual situation. But in this case, that I'm willing to suspect they, they bought too much house. And it's because they don't have a, have a way to pay for emergencies. Pretty much. Yeah, I, not pretty yeah. much. You did. Me and my husband are on different. We My husband doesn't have the same mindset as me. Um, so we're, yeah. So where's his money for the roof? Oh, okay. All right. Of course you can watch this from the description box uninterrupted. Okay. Right now, knowing what we know, and if you follow Dave Ramsey, and if you have followed this channel, all right, we know that, uh, this marriage is probably not going to make it. Why? Because they don't see money the same way. You cannot have a child and think it's going to save the marriage. I'm not saying that's what they're doing, but here's the bottom line. They've gotten themselves what appears to be in over their head with the house. And I don't even think the roof is an emergency. If I'm correct, I'm not going to replay it, but I, I think they went in knowing it needed a roof. Usually when you buy a piece of property, you know, kind of to an extent what's coming up. So really th this roof wasn't even an emergency. Emergencies to me are things that are totally unexpected. We cannot plan for it. Uh, I know my HVAC system will probably give out sometime in the next five to seven years. I've, uh, I already know it's going to cost between probably around eight, $9,000, maybe even 10. I've got 5,000 of it already tucked away. I'm making a plan for it. So I'm not stressed going, oh my God, I need to come up with $9,000 for an HVAC. You know, I won't be as stressed if it's, oh my gosh, I only need to come up with an extra one or 2,000. I can deal with that. I don't want to come up with, oh my gosh, I need eight, 9,000. These, this couple did not plan for what is really technically not an emergency. It's regular maintenance. They didn't plan for it. And the fact that she and her husband are not on the same plan financially. So basically they've created a family, all right, all for all intents and purposes here. They have a family and they're on two totally different wavelengths, which means they should have ever bought this house to begin with. They should have remained renters. They should have actually remained renters until they were on the same page financially. That's just, that's just, just my opinion. Just my opinion. 
He didn't have it with his mindset, does he? No. <laughs> yeah. It's not working. See, and, <laughs> and as I've said before, most of our financial problems are caused by us, the person that we're looking at in the mirror. This is not an unexpected financial quandary they are finding themselves in. It's not. She already knew she and her husband weren't on the same page. Her husband knows she... Her husband knows they're not on the same page, but what they're doing is they're basically uh, taking a shovel and they're digging themselves deeper and deeper into the hole, not being on the same page and then bringing a child into it as well. I, I see, I see f potential. Okay. If the stats hold true, I see potential future issues. No. So $7,000 roof, the roof leaking. It's not leaking. Um, it looks okay so far. But. And another thing, <laughs> oh, this is the Chit Chat channel. Another thing, too, is I think she said they bought this in 2019. <clears throat> so, 921, two, okay, four years they've had to save. If they saved as little as 1500 a year, what is that? One, four, five, six, I told you I'm really bad at math, okay? They, they would have had 6000 towards this. They would have had 6,000. It's, it's like I said, it's like how I'm kind of looking at my HVAC system. Okay. I, I need to be putting away some money each year. Okay. So when the system goes, cause it's going to have to be upgraded. I know this. It's an older building. Okay. It's going to have to be brought to code. I know this. It is not a big surprise, which tells you not only are they not on the same page financially, let, let us also remember the husband is not here to defend himself. And sometimes it's easy for us to jump and go up, oh, you know, the husband's the guilty one. He's the one who's, or whoever it is that's not calling in. In this case, it's the husband, okay? He's the guilty one. We don't know that. We don't know if she's been a total princess, an angel with the finances. We just hear one person's side of the story. Yeah. What have you got? Um... Well, not including the mortgage, we have like a hundred and nine thousand. Um, what? And that is mostly student loans. It's eighty thousand in student loans. Um, twenty thousand between our two cars, um, and then five thousand in credit card. Jesus. Now, I I will admit, I bought my condo for uh. 50,000 because I used part of uh, part of an inheritance to um, purchase it. Okay. The total condo was a hundred thousand. Okay. Um, but even though I had a $110,000 student loan and yes, you can get property with the student loan. Don't believe that you can't. Every case is individual. Okay. But you can do it. Um, but I knew that my student loan was also public service and that it would be forgiven. And of course, two years after I purchased the condo, the student loan was forgiven. And in the two years that I purchased the condo, we were in the pandemic, so no student loan payment was made. Okay? Call that luck, miracle, chance, whatever. Okay? I call it a blessing. All right? Um, I seriously doubt, as in most cases, these student loans are probably not public uh, service forgiveness loans. Maybe they are, but let's go with the assumption that they are not. That's the more likely scenario. They have purchased themselves a piece of property with a whole lot of uh, debt. I, I don't think this was a wise move. Even though I did it, I, I really looked at where my cards are, all were. I had no credit card debt. Okay. I had no baby. All right. No kids. Um, I knew my $110,000 student loan would eventually be forgiven. Okay. At the time, I figured about seven years left of it. I purchased a piece of property way, way less than what I could have afforded. I could have purchased 200000 without oh, care in the world with PMI. I, I could have avoided that. So I look at the way I purchased property. Um, I did it with a much more fine tuning. I kind of am getting the sense that these guys possibly just jumped into it. And what's your household income? Um... Per month, it's about like nine thousand. Okay. So about that's that's not that's not a bad income minus taxes. One hundred twenty thousand a year after yeah. taxes and everything taken out. Okay. When I was married, I made a my ex husband and I together. 
pulled in around 120,000. Um, that's a lot of debt. And we didn't have a kid also. I, again, it, it's easy for people who um, perhaps haven't ever been a uh, six figure household, whether it's one person who earns it for the whole house or whether it's two people bringing it in. It's not as much as it seems. It's really, really not. I, I would not want to be in her shoes because like I said, when I, you know, before I got divorced, we together earned about gross. Okay. About 120,000, maybe just a hair more, not much more. Um, that, that, that's a lot of debt. Okay. When we didn't carry that type of debt load. So it's not as, um, rich as people think it is. And it's especially not when you are not on the same page with your finances and, um, you have overbought, you know, too, too much house. I, I think in this case they, they should have purchased a house. And if they did purchase a, purchase a house, they should have purchased something much more modest. I can't help you until you guys decide you're ready to change your lives. Yeah. I kind of think you are because I kind of hear fear in your voice. Mm-hmm. The fear comes after you, after the spending party hangover, okay, is all done. But I think in this case, part of her fear should be, if it is not, that she and her spouse don't view money the same way. Because I can only imagine, even though I'm not a parent, I can only imagine that raising children and the bills that come with it and how you choose to raise them, you know, private school, public school, tutor, no tutor, wh whatever. If you are not on the same page um, with the financial responsibilities of just, you know, housing, roof, how, how are you going to take care of managing how to raise a child in the sense of financially affording it? OK, not not saying, you know, you're not going to feed them and diaper them and all that. But just what what are what's the budget going to be? What what's the limit? What's the difference between the wants and the needs? You know, it's just something to think about, because to me, financial responsibility has to be in all aspects of a person's life. You know, if I, if I did have kids, I would have to look, OK, what is the budget going to be for Christmas presents this year? Are we going to go broke until we're one of the news stories of people who bought so much stuff for their kids for Christmas? The family's bankrupt. Or are we going to put a limit on it? These I think part of the fear that she has is that she and her husband are not only in debt. And that actually may be the smaller fear because that debt can be worked on if you have two people on the same page fighting for the same cause. But it's the fact that there's a, there appears to be a disconnect emotionally that I believe later transfers into romantically. There, there is a disconnect in that relationship and I don't see it getting smaller from my own life experience minus child. Okay. I, I don't see that disconnect getting smaller. I only see it getting bigger and bigger. And believe me, the financial stresses of affording a piece of property, been there, done that. Okay. Um, that can kill a relationship as well. Financial, um, what is it? Financial discord in a relationship can be a relationship breaker. I think you're scared because he's, yeah, because he's continued yeah. to not change and you all keep doing the same stupid butt stuff over and over. Don't you? Yeah, and we use we um, we budget every month, but it's like every no, month you we don't. set aside no, you things. Don't. Yeah, it doesn't. If they budgeted every month, Ramsey's right. Okay, if they budget every month, they would have the money for this roof. They bought the property. If I'm correct, if I'm correct, and I heard this right, you know, it is get a little later at night. Okay, if I am correct, they bought this property knowing it was going to need a roof. And and even if somebody doesn't come to you, to you and says, hey, you need a roof. The bottom line is most people, when they buy property, and I'm no property expert, but some major things I look at, what's the condition of the roof? What's the condition of the HVAC? What's the condition of the ceilings, the floors? Basically the four walls. Okay, I can deal with, you know, we don't like the wallpaper color. The paint's not great. I can deal with that. But but I, I want the structure, okay? The, the, the electrical stuff. I want the big stuff. So they bought this property knowing it, but much like I'm willing to bet, I'm willing to bet that they deal with each other in a relationship. It's living in denial. We'll just ignore it. We'll ignore it till we have to deal with it. That's how they probably run their marriage. I don't like to be pessimistic. It will not surprise me if this couple is divorced. 
at some point down the road. It doesn't no, follow not. through. No, it's, you, you, it's, a, it's a wish. It's a dream. You're not, you're not really leaning in. The two of you have not sat down, taken each other's hands, and looked deeply into each other's eyes and says, nothing happens here until we get this debt cleaned up. We're about to be on beans and mm-hmm. rice, rice and beans, and we're going to clean up. We're going to quit buying anything until we get this debt cleaned up, and we're going to live on nothing, and we're going to make every dollar scream. Every dollar is going to behave. Y'all are nowhere near that. I have been told that I can make a dollar bleed. Yes, that's what I, that, that is, I've been told that many times. I will take a dollar, <coughs> excuse me, I had to cough. Um, I've been told that I can make a dollar bleed, scream, kick, and cry. Yes, I can. I'm an expert at it <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah. You wish you were, but you're not. Yeah. And, and, she, and I'm sorry. She's not as innocent as she's going to try to come across. You know, sometimes it annoys me. So now, now, some of these callers do call in, and man, my gut instinct says, "Yep, they're, they're absolutely right. They, they are completely right." But most of the time, I, I have to leave some reservation room and go, "Okay, everybody's hearing it from the side of the caller. Let's hear it from the side of the husband." I can pretty much assure you, she isn't innocent in this. Just, ju- it's, it's, it's just my gut hunch. I, I feel like she's not as innocent. Yeah. Her husband's not helping, but she probably hasn't helped either. Yeah. 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 So what, 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 what is going to get him moving in the right direction? You have the money to clean this up once you have the, um, wi- once you have the will. Yeah. Um, I did sit down with him like actually a couple days ago and I actually finally listed out like all the debts that we had and like. And did he list out the debts with you? Was this a joint venture or are you simply listing the debts and he's supposed to nod his head? We should be listing the debts together. Both of us should be in the know. And here's the thing, just like I've said before, who's the cause of most of our financial problems? We are. We are the cause of most of our financial problems. In this case, you tell me where they're victim to anybody. I I don't see any victims here. Okay. Okay. I see no victims. Baby doesn't count. All right. But between the two adults, these were all decisions that were made. They were controllable. And this is something, it's a hard lesson that I've had to teach myself even. Okay. When I make a financial decision, it's it's a hard lesson. But it was something that um, as I peel myself out of debt the last couple of years, I really was like, man, you know, it's so easy to get wrapped up into thinking life just happened to us. When in reality, we had the ability to create most of it. We, you know, figured out like, okay, the debt, if we did the debt snowball, we'd be like pay it off within like five years, just paying the minimums and doing the debt snowball. Yeah. And um, so you would be debt then, free. You'd be, you should be yeah. debt free in about two and a half years. Yeah. If we really. If you did it, what yeah, I teach you to do. Mm-hmm. You have the money to do it. You don't. Have- if you don't count the taxes, you can do it. Like I said. When I was married, I made this type of income. We did not have a child on the way to fund. Okay, we did have the student loan. That was actually around, at the time, about 85000 It was right around that time. Um, we did have the house. Okay. It um, wasn't a real expensive house. It was un- under two hundred, But it, it wasn't easy. But it, it is solvable. But someone's probably going to have to work extra hours. I mean, it's, it's going to be... It's not going to be an easy road, but it can be done. But you both have to be on the same page and willing to fight for the same thing. By the will to do it. What, what did he say when he saw yeah. his pile of debt and his wife terrified sitting in front of him? Yeah, we're, yeah, it's almost like it's laughable because it's, I mean, it's not funny, but it's like, because we're just like, we knew the student loan debt was bad. Um, and that's what the when you lay it out is. and say um, I can do it in two and a half years if I would commit to it like an adult and quit being a child, what's laughable? It's not laughable. Nothing, it's very nothing. doable. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. It's very doable. Um, why? Are you, why are? Yeah, what's holding I, you guys up from doing that? I just I don't know. Every year, every month, it's like I feel like our gift budget goes is crazy every month. We're like because we have so many family and friends and and weddings and baby showers. Has nothing. Like, to- every- Screw all that. Their gift budget, they ain't rich enough for a gift budget. I donate $25 a month. That's what I donate. I, I actually donate them to YouTube channels that I really, really love. That, that, that's, you know, just, you know, that, that's, that's where I make my donation. 
Okay, if I'm a member of a church, I donate some time. Okay, a gift budget. You know that that's called blaming other people for your. That, that's called passing the buck and trying to blame other people for your inability to control your own budget. The inability to say no. Oh, but we have a lot of family members. We have friends. We have a gift budget a mile long. Who cares? Who gives a crap? Are they going to turn around and pay your bill? Are they going to turn around and save your marriage? Okay. Are they going to turn around and do that? Because you're so financially sunk. You've lost interest in each other. I don't think they're going to do any of that. I, I got to be honest, you know, like when I go shopping sometimes, especially during the holiday season. And I'm buying myself a treat. Okay. It might be, I don't know, say a hundred dollar item. And they'll go, is this a gift? Who the hell's got a hundred bucks to just give out? <laughs> I don't know if that's just me, but it's like, Lord, if, if I had a hundred bucks to just give as a gift, okay. I'm, you know, I, I'd be thrilled if I could do that. I don't have that type of budget. Okay. For the most part, our family doesn't exchange gifts. Okay. And I'm the type, you know, I'll buy, you know, I'll send my sisters, you know, a little Venmo or something. Say, here, you know, lunch is on me. Okay. This is how I do things during the year. I don't sit and go, ah, oh, man, you know, I have to have a two, $300 gift budget. These people need a new roof. Are, are the people they're gifting stuff to going to give them a new roof? What they really want to do, I sense, is they really like spending money. Okay. And they have found their excuse to spend money is, well, we, we have to go to a wedding. We have to, this, I think she said wedding. Okay. We, we, we need to buy gifts. Are they trying to impress people? What is it that Ramsey says? Don't buy things for people you're trying to impress. He's got some little lengthy thing. I can't remember the exact words. Okay. A gift budget. I don't think I've heard that in any reaction call I've listened to since becoming a reaction channel in September. I, I don't think I've ever heard a gift budget. <laughs> Every month. There's nothing to do with it. No, I know. Yeah. You know what it is. The two yeah. of you are not working together. You don't agree that you have to sacrifice deeply for two and a half years to clean up this mess. This was a month ago. Okay. This would not surprise me. Okay. Um, if this husband, again, I... I, I I think they're both at fault for this. She's not innocent. So let, let's get that straight. This would be the type of couple it would not surprise me if the husband left shortly after the baby was born. It wouldn't surprise me. It would not surprise me if this was the type of couple that within a few months, a couple years after baby being born, he walks out. And I only say he because statistically that is what would happen. Yes, it could be she, but statistically unlikely okay but this would not surprise me if the relationship were to end that, that's probably i should put more than the husband walked out okay the relationship were to end shortly after the baby is born they honestly had no business buying a house together much less getting married much less getting married and i can pretty much tell you that every sign um, that there was something wrong with the relationship was ignored. It was ignored. Once you mm -hmm. agree to that, the gift budget goes away. We just tell people, no, I can't do it. I'm broke. And, and, and if they, uh, thumb their nose at you, turn their nose up at you, tell you, you stink. Don't worry about it. As you're crawling yourself out of debt, it, you'll be smelling those flowers and tulips in no time. I have told friends flat out. Okay. That, hey, I, I can't afford this, okay? Um, a couple of us like to go and have lunch, you know, every now and then. And uh, probably about once every month, you know, I'll, I'll spend, you know, one nice meal. And a nice meal for me on my budget, 20 bucks. Once a month, okay? Once a month. Maybe twice during Christmas break because we have an extended time during the break. And I like to, you know, get together with some friends and stuff. But that, that to me, that, that to me is... Um, that, that's an expensive meal. $20 is expensive. Okay. Uh, if somebody wants to go to, I've I had some gal pals once and uh, I think they wanted to go to a place that was way more expensive than I could afford. And I had to actually tell them, guys, I'd love to go with you, but I can't, I, I can't afford it. Okay. I'm not ashamed 
to the right company. Other people, I would just graciously bow out and say, thank you. I have plans that evening. I'm going out of town, whatever. Okay. Lie. But to people that are my closest friends, I, I can just honestly say, look, you know what? I, th this, this, this is a no go for me, you know, politely, of course. <laughs> and honestly, if they're your true friends, they're going to understand. They're going to understand. Yeah. I'm so broke, I can't put a yeah. roof on my own freaking house. E even though I had four years to prepare for it. Of course, I'm not buying mm -hmm. you a gift. <laughs> That's because secretly they like to shop. It is. Secretly, there's a combination of, the, the, like I said, the gift. We have the gift line item budget, okay? Part of it is, they, she likes to shop. I guarantee it to you, she likes to shop. I pretty much guarantee it to you. And, and that, you know, we're buying it as a gift kind of helps, you know, perpetuate the, uh, what is it? The idea of, oh, but we're not shopping for ourselves. We're shopping for other people. Nah, nah, nah. You're also shopping for yourself. <laughs> I mean, it's real yeah. simple. Did he resist it when you laid out the, the debts for him? What was his reaction? You didn't answer that. No, no. He, he was actually on board. He said, yeah, like that sounds good, but it's just a matter of like, well, now we have that, but then we also have to get a roof. So how are we going to... Everybody's on board with the idea of getting out of debt till somebody says, okay, what are you going to give up to get us out? <laughs> it's kind of like everybody's on board with, um, you know, drug rehab centers to improve society. Just don't put it in my neighborhood. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Everybody's on board until the card question is, what are you going to give up so we can get there? Uh, for because we can't wait. You don't have to get a roof. It's not leaking. Roof. It's just looking like it's gonna leak. That's right. Oh, just put some tar on it. Call it a day with a big old five gallon bucket. Slam it on top of the roof for a while and pray. <laughs> yeah. The roof is not your problem. Mm -hmm. The marriage is the problem. The roof is just a metaphor. <laughs> no, that's not a metaphor. The roof is a symbol. Okay. Of the issues in the marriage. The problem is right. you make $9,000 a month and you keep buying crap you can't afford like a roof. Yeah. You can't. You need to clean this mess up. And you'll be able to get a roof. Okay. You'll be able to get a roof. Roofs, you're, you can get a roof. But the two of you need to get on a detailed budget together and deeply sacrifice. Cut everything out of your lives. No eating out. No vacations. No gift budget. Certainly no buying anything. It's not necessary to exist. Scorched earth lifestyle. And $9,000 a month, you can clean up a lot of debt on that kind of money. Assuming it's gross, it's probably closer to about 7000 a month. You got a good income, but you just misbehave with it. And, and, uh, did we ever find out exactly how much the house was? Ah, I can't remember. Okay. Did we ever even find out what the mortgage was? Can't remember that either. Oh my goodness. Maybe it's because it's getting late. I don't think, I don't think we ever knew what the mortgage was though. Continuously. And you guys are going to have to fix that. When you fix that, the stuff we teach with every dollar, Financial Peace University, Total Money Makeover book, it works and you'll be able to do it. Okay, people. Well, it is now at 935 not a school night so I was able to play all right people that is our evening bedtime story I was going to do an after chat but I'm starting to get a little tired so I'll save the after chat for a uh, either shorter video or when I'm not tired <laughs> okay folks I'm Carrie this is student loan chit chat I would like to sincerely thank you for joining me here this evening I hope you will consider subscribing and you guys have yourself a most wonderful Saturday night. I will see you tomorrow on Sunday. Bye.